Hey babes, my name's Hannah. And my name's Chastity. Welcome back to Bookish Babes. So we did a thing that we haven't done in a long time, which is we both read the same book semi-close together. Um, so we wanted to talk about it and do a book babble on it. Um, it. The book is called Mother May I by Jocelyn Jackson. This was recommended to me by you, <laughs> which was, and it was recommended to you by Jess, correct? Nope. Other way around. Oh, you read it and then recommended it to Jess? Mm -hmm. Taryn Fisher talked about it. Nope. Okay. Where'd you read it? Um, Taryn Fisher has talked about this book, though. She did, yeah. I, but she talked about it after I read it. Yeah. I don't remember. Okay. It was just one that you happened to pick up? Yeah. Okay. It was... I don't remember. I think ride. I had an advanced reader yeah. of it. I don't remember. There I'm were very... pretty sure I got an advanced reader from Nat Galley, though. So thank you, Nat Galley. Yeah. Shout out to Nat Galley. Um... There were very few points in this book where I knew what was coming next, which I always appreciate because I feel like I read a lot of books like this, or I have read a lot of books like this, and so a lot of times I can see. And there were a few things that I saw. Um, but let me just start this off by saying that this is going to be full of spoilers. We're going to talk about all the yes. parts in the book. So if you at all feel like you want to read this book, we both recommend it. Um, go read it and then come back and listen to our chat and chat along with us in the comments and let us know what you thought too. You have been warned. Yes. This is your time to yes. exit. If you, wa if you watch this video, you may as well not even read the book because we're just going to spoil everything. Yes. Um, so I was really drawn in by the title. I remember that. Like, The Mother, Mother May, May I. I was initially kind of turned off when I read the synopsis because I, obviously, with the mention of the witch, thought that it was going to be, like, supernatural. Which I do like supernatural books. It just wasn't what I was in the mood for at the time. I never read the synopsis. I, I do. I'm I bad know, like that. you're so good with that. Yeah. No, you're so good with that. People do all the time. No, I but don't. sometimes I'm I wish that I brat. wouldn't, especially times like this, because the synopsis did not at all do a good job of explaining what the book was going to be about. No, so, like, I never read it. So, like, that's why the synopsis was, like, I was like, I could have just skipped it because it wasn't, it was not supernatural at all. The mention of the witch... Um, it's really not relevant to the story. It's not. I think it's just because she calls her a witch. Initially. Oh, okay. Initially, yeah. Initially, but then it's never mentioned again once she realizes I mean, that she's an old lady. True. Um, they, and they call her a witch basically because she, you know, she's thin and older and I guess like the way they describe like, her, like she kind of looks a little spooky and yeah, she's hunched over and she wears a hat. She has like long dark hair and maybe it's gray or something. I don't remember exactly what color her hair was, but yeah, I, was I, I remember the mention of her hair looking like stringy, like mm -hmm. a witch's would. Um, yeah. And she was just like outside the window when she woke up the first yeah. time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that she was, it was mentioned initially that she was outside the window and then the events that transpired afterwards are like so bone chilling to me. Like she was literally watching outside their window. You find out in them. in the book that she had a key to their house. So Remember, they stole the daughter's so key. Creepy. I know. So, anyway, yeah. From the beginning, I initially really liked her and her husband's relationship. Obviously, towards the end, I felt differently about him. <laughs> but what was his name? So his name was Robert too, because that's why they named their son Robert. But they go Trey. They call him Trey. Remember, because he was the third. That's right. Um, which is just a douche name. I hate so that I should have known. No offense to any Trey's out there, <laughs> 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 or like anybody who's like married to or has a child named Trey. Sorry, um, but it is a kind of a douchey name. At least that's what I think of. Um, and so I didn't initially like him, but. And then it was talked about that he was like a rich lawyer and he kind of came from like old money, but mm -hmm. he seemed really nice and he. Even throughout the whole book, um, the main character maintained that he was always a good father and a good husband to her. Um, he did some shady shit in his past, but uh, at <laughs> least there's that. <laughs> um, and Trey did some shady shit? No. Not Trey. No. I also really appreciated the way that the narrator talked about her kids because it wasn't like all sunshine and roses which I liked. I feel like sometimes when narrators mention their children, it's like, oh, they're perfect and they're the light of my life. Like she was a mother and she was in like the, the trenches of motherhood and you could definitely tell when you read it. Yeah. She was talking about, you know, how she was like exhausted and how mm -hmm. she felt yeah. about her body after having kids. And, and about how she wasn't connecting with some of her kids. Yeah. Was, yeah. The, the same way. Struggle, yeah, yeah. It was, it was interesting to read, but it's realistic. Yeah. But it wasn't like, 
like some of the other thrillers that I've read were like the mothers are unhinged and they just hate their children. Like she loved her kids, but there was definitely that, that disconnect with some of the emotions that mm -hmm. I feel like are typically portrayed with motherhood. Yeah. No, so. I think she did a really good job with yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. It was very For sure. real. Yeah. For sure. I also think she did a really good job with the panic. Like oh, the, my God. the feelings of the, the mother after the initial like, yeah. Missing child. And like the, the snatch. Yeah. Like, oh my God. And how, even though she was so panicked about her one child, she was still definitely a mother towards her other child. Mm -hmm. So like in the moment of panic, she still had to obviously be a mom. make arrangements yeah. for her other children. Yeah. Um, so initially when Robert, the baby was taken, obviously it was kind of obvious that the witch had taken him. You know, because they had alluded to her so much with her looking in the window and then Seeing her mentioning the her again lot. in the parking lot yeah. at, at her children's school. Um, I that or you know that what was her name Bree Bree yeah that she was just a uh, you know alone. Yeah, I, I at first I was like, is she just a little crazy? She keeps seeing this lady, but um, <laughs> and then it was just not a, a it couldn't be a coincidence, you know? Yeah. And she kept seeing her, and then now her baby was missing. Um, also. I think it's interesting that she touched on her friendship with Betsy. Yeah. And how the friendship did not carry on to their daughters. I know. That's like a point that you don't see very often. I think it was cool that she did that. Yeah. Um, That's real. Yeah. And Marshall. Chef's kiss. Loved Marshall. Chef's kiss. Um, what a great man and what a great like friend even though they were kind of disconnected at that point the fact that they had enough of a connection he to just, where he he showed up yes and in that moment of immense fear that she was feeling he is the person that she called to take her other children like she mentions in the book like i could have called one of the other moms you know i could have i could have had anybody take them to my mother but i called him yeah that's like that like stood out because to Because she knew. Yeah. And also like, Betsy was that connection between them, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, and I kind of liked hearing some of their backstory too. Like how they were all friends when they were younger. And then, you know, mm -hmm. how he was initially interested in, in Brie, but then ended mm -hmm. up with Betsy. I knew. <laughs> I knew. What were your thoughts on some of it? I mean, I, I loved mm -hmm. all of that. I, yeah. I loved the connection between Brie and Marshall probably the most. It I really was so thought, necessary to the story. Yeah, I really thought that it was very necessary to the story. Yeah. I loved their their history, and then mm -hmm. I loved that she she turned to him in that instant, and then he his reaction yeah. was to like be there fully and yeah. to like immerse himself so much more into it. I also liked the other chick. Yeah, Gabriella or yes. Gabrielle. Yeah. Loved her. She really kind of was like, all right, I'm gonna ride with y'all, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I'm coming with. Yeah, she, she made herself definitely like an accessory. She <laughs> She's for a crime sure that she did. She but was like, she, uh -huh, I'm in. What she are we was doing for the ride anyway? What do we gotta do next? Yeah. Um, and I was like, I would have got the fuck out of there, but okay. That was kind of interesting and like initially weird to me that she went from like, okay, I can't tell anybody that I did this to like, realizing that she killed a man and being like, so this is what I did, <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. I feel like I would go home and not tell anybody. Right, um, right, right. <laughs> also, that was so shocking to me. I totally thought they were him. roofies. I totally thought they were roofies. And then it got to the point where he was like, it mentioned that he was violently vomiting and I'm like, oh, roofies don't really do, I mean, sometimes they can make people sick, I've heard. I was heard, like, oh, but... no, he's dying. But I'm like, oh, and then she talked about like, he was like seizing or whatever. I was like, oh, you was should like, probably mm. leave. You just killed somebody, girl. You should probably You're an get accessory out of there. to murder. Um, <laughs> yeah, and then she, I, th I thought the whole thing was funny because she was just waiting for her lift. You know? Yeah. Like it wasn't. It was so. It was something so normal that she was like waiting for her ride share. That's what was going on. It wasn't like she like stayed around to watch what happened. She's like, damn, my lift's not here. I gotta watch this guy die after I poison him. <laughs> my ride's not here but... yet. My ride's not here yet. I guess I'll just watch. Can we talk about the fact that this kind of all felt a little melodramatic, though, on the mother's part? Yeah. Like, I get it. She was dying. She wants justice for her daughter. 
but like taking an another woman's mm -hmm. child and killing them yeah you're a little bit of a looney tune yeah like like when she mentioned that she had killed that other child dude dude so sad and like what the fuck? like I get that a horrible thing happened to her daughter. I get it. Okay. Oh, seriously, that little that little boy had nothing. The little to do boy with didn't it. do it. The little boy didn't do it. And really, what who you're punishing? And and I don't want to like make this generalization, but men. I hate making this generalization, but really, when you are if you're killing a child, the person who you're torturing the most is that child's mother. Not saying that dads can't love their children as much as mothers do. I'm just saying that women are wired differently. And there's definitely just more of that connection. There just is. And so, and you, and you saw that with that other child, Jeff. Remember, the, like, the lady hated how his name was spelled. <laughs> um, but, like, she with the other... saying it over. <laughs> Geoff. <laughs> um, it's so not funny. I but know. For real. She's like, I, I took him and his name was stupid and it killed him. And I was like, oh, shit. Um, but, like... You could see Jeff's parents. The mother went unfucking hinged. Unhinged. Completely. And the father was like sad, but he was still like he was still functional. himself. The mother was not functional anymore. Like that's how. And so I just thought the whole thing was ironic. Like if you wanted to really torture these men, I feel like there was better you ways to get back at them. Torture them. Yeah, than to like take away you could and poison kill a child. every one of the men. Right. Because involved really who and you're... not take children and not harm the women yeah. because the women and the children are innocent why don't you go after the fucking men yeah and the only reason she that. went after what was his name spencer um was because he didn't have any children and he was so narcissistic the only person he loved was, was himself and so that's why she killed him um but didn't kill the other two men and wanted to like take their children it made no sense but, to but me. that's just torturing the children and the women the most like it's not torturing them the most so i don't yeah she was just a fucking looney tune yeah I mean, I'm guessing she lost her mind because, you know. Because her daughter died? Yeah. That was, like, definitely a revelation that I wasn't expecting. I didn't expect the daughter to be dead. Um, but it makes sense. You know, that's probably why she went off it's her It's just, rocker. like, you know, it's just another one of those situations where it's, like, every one of your actions causes a chain of reaction. Correct. It's Not because so... this girl was a... All because this girl was raped when she was in college. Mm -hmm. It set off all of this. All of this. She became, she dropped out of college, became a drug addict, was homeless. Um, her mother lost every ounce of money that she ever had, putting her through rehab multiple times. And then once her mother, once she died, her mother got sick and her mother decided to kill this child, putting you know, the child's mother through pain, all to get back at this one man. It doesn't make any sense. But I don't think it's supposed to make sense. You know, that's the whole that's the whole mindset behind her and how crazy she is. Yeah. Is that that's what mm -hmm. makes a truly crazy person is somebody who's like not thinking in a way that is that makes sense. Yeah. It was all just makes for a good story though. Yeah. Can I be real though? I would knocked off a star cuz I kind of wanted more to happen. Like the ending was just the ending was a little sweet, I'm not going to lie. I did appreciate that she showed up and took Trey out. I hate that they killed her though. I knew that it had to happen. I knew that it's like, and he was even mentioned that like it was, she was clearly planning on dying, you know, yeah. when she showed up to kill yeah. Trey. Cause she had like dressed herself up like a lot of people who commit suicide do. That they kind of thought that like she was not planning to live after that. Yeah. Like her, she knew her son was dead at that point, and she knew that it was all because of a series of reactions, yeah. like a chain reaction because of one thing that this man did, mm -hmm. that she showed up, shot him, and then planned to either get shot herself or do it herself. Yeah. Yeah. I was just like, I remember at the end, they were at this bar, and I'm like, not only did this man just like gaslight his wife, and was like, I didn't rape this girl, how dare you ever say that about me? And now he's like, let's Gas just go lighting. get a dinner and talk. Let's go, just go to get a few drinks and talk. And then this this bitch shows up with a gun and takes her out. I was just she like, said, oh, what? not on my watch. Okay. But then, you know, Brie Marshall, which is the way that it always should have been. It should have been. It's a shame that all this had to happen for that to happen. But, like, Betsy had to die, you know. But things have a way of working out the way they're supposed to. 
I guess. <laughs> It's a really fucked up way. It's a really fucked up way, but it happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, but it was it was quite a ride. It really was. Um, I so I was telling her the only reason I knocked off a star was a because I do wish there was more of like that. I don't. It was a thriller, not a psychological thriller. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I was expecting more of a psychological thriller. Maybe that's on me. Also, I guessed some of the things that happened. Um, like once it was kind of revealed that these men had done something to this woman's daughter, I was like, oh, they raped her. Like I kind of knew at that point that they had raped her. I, so I wasn't surprised by that revelation with the pictures. Um, another thing I was not surprised by was the fact that she had Robert close by to where they were meeting, you know? Mm -hmm. when they initially met in that area yeah that she had robert really close by and like hooked up to a detonator or something like she was gonna blow the baby up i was like oh my god she was gonna blow the fucking baby up yeah so i do think that all of it literally was... <laughs> that was so nerve-wracking like when me. marshall said he was like oh and then the baby's foot kicked out and like he like touched the explosive i was like oh my god he, he's like right next to an explosive Wait, what? I was literally having heart palpitations yeah. the entire time reading that. Because mm -hmm. if, oh my god, I can't even read that kind of stuff. And if I'm watching a movie and there's something like that with a baby, I'm out. I can't, mm -hmm. I cannot handle anything that happens with children. I can't. No, I don't like kids, but like that was a lot. No. Um, mm -hmm. I can't do it. That was just, that was wild to me that she was just going to blow the baby up anyway. After, and I, was, I also thought it was weird that like, the lady and Coral was her name, right? Cora, Coral, something like that. Mm -hmm. And something Brie, like, that. like, had, like, this weird connection. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. when they're talking on the phone. Yeah. Like, they kind of liked each other. Even yeah, though, like, it was like, a weird kind situation. Of it was weird. But I thought it was weird that, and, like, kind of almost out of character, that Coral was still going to hurt Robert anyway. You know, she lost her child, and she had a connection with Brie over the fact that their, like, you know, pasts were kind of similar. And she was still going to kill Robert anyway, even though she was going to kill herself. Yeah, it made no sense. But that didn't make any sense to me. I didn't like that. <laughs> it made no sense. I was like, oh, not Robert. <laughs> Leave Robert out of this. Ridiculous. Like, she did everything she, you asked her to do. She killed that guy. She showed up. She met you. Yeah, what more do you want from me? Yeah, like? and then you're going to kill her baby anyway? Because she's crazy. Yeah. I mean, I guess I probably shouldn't try to make it make sense. No. Maybe it just means my brain is right if I don't think it's, I don't, if I don't think it makes sense. You're not a psychopath? Yeah. I'm yeah, not going to kill a baby. I'm not going to kidnap and kill a baby. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's probably a safe bet. Yeah. But I just thought the whole thing with him, with her like killing children to give back at the men was, didn't make all that much sense. But she is a woman and she is a mother. And so I think that that's why she thought that was the best way to get back at them because that's the way that you could hurt her you know it's like when something happened to her child that was the worst thing ever so she's yeah. like oh if i do something to their children it's gonna be the worst thing ever but that those men were not good men and so they weren't like that exactly so and all they ended up doing was hurting the mothers in the long run which it is exactly what happened to her it's like she she did to them what was done to her which made no sense because you don't want to yeah. hurt the women you, you should have just killed the men. men just poison the men just take them out just kill all they the were rapists just take them out even the one that took the pictures he was still an accessory of course he was yeah kill the men anyway kill the men that's the um what we want you to that's get from this video <laughs> what that's what you need to take away yeah. from what we took away from this book is that you need to actually kill the men yeah is there anything that would, you would like to add? I don't think so. I yeah. think you've got it pretty covered. Yeah. Kill the men. Kill the men. Not, and don't, not the children or the women. Yeah. They were not at fault here. No, they didn't even meet these men till well after it happened. I know. I, th I Like, I thought that was so men weird. all the problems. But I think that that was the whole point of the book. Was that... Is that she was so like blinded in her grief that she ended up doing to other women the exact thing that was done to her mm -hmm. and not really accomplishing her overall goal to like punish the men you know who did accomplish the goal that crazy mom who showed up and shot him 
Yeah. She accomplished your goal. So yeah. don't worry about it, queen. She did. She did. She shot her husband and Bree's husband. So she did dirty work for you. She did. She took she's care the of one all you should have called, not, not Bree. Yeah. She took care of all of yeah, it. Yeah. She's she like, said, don't you worry about you it. and yeah. fuck you and I'm done. Yeah. She really did. She did some queen shit right there. Can we talk about how at the end though, when I can't remember her name, when the, the crazy mom showed up, the mother of the dead child, how she thought it was the daughter. Do you remember that? Yes. Why was that? I Do we think that means something? How she thought it was the daughter, but she's like, that doesn't make sense for it to be the daughter because the daughter would like is A, dead, and B, would be like in her 50s at this point. And it was addicted to meth, so it would look much older than that. And this yeah. woman was in her 20s, and so she's like, oh, and then she realizes it's the mom. Like the mom that lost the child. Yeah, I don't know why that... I don't know. Maybe it's just like the trauma, like she was kind of looping everybody together. Yeah. Probably just a trauma reaction. And like maybe it's all. like, oh my God, she showed up in a white Anything? dress, which is like symbolism for um, the meth addict daughter. Yeah. Because, you know, her mom always said, like, your virginity is like a white dress. So, oh, I didn't like those undertones either. But anyway. Mm. Anyway. Anyway, it's quite a ride. It's yeah. It's a good book. You should read it. I do also feel like I need to point out that the mother is a little bit to blame for how her daughter turned out to be a meth addict because she was... I think it all kind of boiled down to the fact that she was so ashamed that she had given her body to somebody, even if it was unwillingly, um, that she felt like she couldn't turn to her mother and she turned to drugs instead. And so that's why purity culture is dangerous. That's the, that's what I want you to get from this. Kill the men and purity culture is dangerous. <laughs> anyway, thanks that's for all watching. I have. Okay. <laughs> that's all I have. I'm going to, you I'm not. also read this, I'm really curious to know what your thoughts were. I really, really would like to know. Please let us know please, down below. Please, please let us know. Yeah. But that's it. That's it. So comment down below if you've read this and let us know. Like and subscribe mm -hmm. and hit that notification bell so you know when we post next. Bye. Bye.